Lesson 70, Agreement. Well, Catherine, I think we can agree that this is an important <laughs> lesson. Definitely. And we've talked about agreement already some, haven't we? Yes. In previous lessons, we've talked about singular and plural and subjects agreeing with verbs a little bit, but it's good to have an overview of what agreement is and how it works. That's right. In, in this lesson, we're going to just take it apart a bit more and look at the concept of agreement in a more of a specific kind of way. And for beginners, the way I explain the idea of agreement is like this. I say that agreement is when two words need to have the same characteristics so they can work together. Yeah. That's just a basic general description for me of the idea of agreement in grammar. Yes, and that concept can be expanded to as many words as you need to communicate whatever idea you're going for in the sentence. But it has to be at least two words. And when I say two words must have the same characteristics, that could be referring to different kinds of words. It could be talking about a noun in an article. It could be talking about a verb and some other pronoun. You know, there are various situations in which you need agreement. Many. At this stage, our readers just have a couple of ways to make things agree. So let's take them through a few examples yes. here and just give them a few explicit examples of how agreement works. And we've already covered this in passing, but let's talk about it again. A noun and the article that introduces that noun, they, they need to have the same characteristics. And so grammatically, what we say is they need to agree with each other. And as you move forward in your study of Greek, you'll see more ways in the future that an article and a noun need to agree. But for right now, where you are, there's one definite way you know that they have to agree, and that is in number. If you have a noun that is plural and you want to put an article with it, that article has to be plural too. So we have an example here. We have hoi strate goi. And so that means the generals. And so hoi is a plural article. Strate goi is a plural noun. They both need to be plural so they agree with each other. And so that's a, an example of agreement. And we cannot have what we see in the second example, which is ho strate goi. We cannot have a singular article with a plural noun or vice versa, a plural article introducing a singular noun. Ho is singular, strate goi is plural. So ho strate goi doesn't make any sense. And this is a good example of how English and Greek are different. Because in English, the word the doesn't change. You could say the general or the generals, and either way, the word the is the same. But in ancient Greek, you have to change the article to match the noun that it introduces. Mm -hmm. So ho strategoi would be grammatically wrong because you're mixing a singular article with a plural noun. The other area of agreement that our listeners have seen is that of subject and verb. So the subject of a sentence and the verb must agree with each other also. And there are a couple different ways, but here we'll just talk about what has been learned so far, which is agreeing in number. What we can do is we can say a singular verb and a singular noun together. So in the example sentence, we have Amy Georgos. Amy is singular and Georgos is also singular. So they agree and everything's good. But we cannot have something like Amy Georgoi. I am farmers. That just does not work because we have Amy is singular, Georgoi is plural, and they clash. They do not agree. Whereas Amy Georgos, I am a farmer, does agree. So here, not only do nouns and articles have to agree, but the subject and verb also have to agree. That's right. If you said, I am farmers, that wouldn't make any sense. Right, because it's a singular paired with a plural, and we can't have that. It has to be both singular or both plural. 
So in this particular lesson, we've looked at a couple of ways in which the idea of agreement governs our use of words in not only Greek grammar, but English grammar too. And so again, the basic idea of agreement is that two words that are working together need to have the same characteristics in order to work together, grammatically speaking, in a sentence. And as I say here in the book, the idea of agreement is not just something for beginners. You never really outgrow agreement, do you, Catherine? Definitely not. In fact, agreement is one of the things that helps later when you're looking at very advanced Greek texts that have multiple nouns and verbs in them. And so a lot of times you end up seeing, oh, this noun is singular and this verb is singular. And so those are the two that go together, not this singular noun and this plural verb over here. And for me, the big thing there that makes this important is that sometimes two words that agree with each other aren't together. Often they're not. In the example sentences we've seen here, the words are adjacent. The two words that agree with each other are right next to each other. But as you get more advanced, you'll see Greek texts in which two words are agreeing with each other, but they're not together. They have other words between them. Mm -hmm. And this gets back to that flexibility of Greek word order that we talked about several lessons ago, where because Greek word order is flexible, you can have words that agree but are not adjacent. 